Have you ever read a page in a book where you read it, but then you immediately forgot every single word you just read? This is because you weren't actively engaged in the reading. This is such a massive time waster and it's the polar opposite to studying smart. So when you're reading, when you're studying, when you're revising for your exams, the information that you consume is so important that you don't just consume it passively, but you process that information too. Because by processing the information, you're moving that information from your short term memory and you're moving it over to your long-term memory. And I remember when I was 15 or 16 and I was studying for my French exam, it was a speaking exam. So what I had to do was memorize about three paragraphs of French. And I had written three paragraphs in French, so it wasn't that much information to memorize, right? And I spent weeks, literally weeks, reading and reading and reading these three paragraphs to try and memorize them. And I remember it so clearly, I was reading these three paragraphs over and over, but it just wasn't sinking in. Then sure enough, the exam came around and I was given a grade F. Now my grades were pretty average at best at high school, but getting an F for an exam, I don't think I'd ever received such a bad grade before. But looking back, it was quite obvious to me now what was happening, but I just didn't realize it at the time. So I was reading the three paragraphs over and over, but I wasn't processing the information because the text was all in French. Each word was just a random bunch of letters put together and each word didn't really mean anything. I didn't really understand the words. So I was basically just reading to memorize random sounds because when I wrote the three paragraphs I was using the dictionary for pretty much every word and every sentence what I should have done is used really basic words that I knew already and that way it would give me meaning to the text so that I could process it and memorize it far easier so that was the time where not processing information but just reading the information passively got me the worst grade that I've ever gotten. That was an extreme example, but passively processing information was a theme throughout my entire high school career. Fortunately, in the few years between high school and university, I learned about how important active engagement is when studying. And it really was a game changer. Using some really basic strategies to activate my brain more when reading, I could probably process and retain, and that last bit is important, retain as much information in four hours, which would have taken me eight hours to memorize if I was revising the same material in high school. So basically, in terms of memorization for an exam, I could cut my studying down by up to 50%. Now that's huge and that right there is the perfect example of studying smarter not harder. So I'll give you a few of the best active engagement strategies that worked really well for me. The first one is simplifying and summarizing the information. So when you're taking notes, whether you're taking notes from your textbook or you're taking notes from your lectures, then you need to not just copy down the information word for word exactly how it's written in the textbook or exactly how your lecturer explained it. A far more effective way and smarter way of taking notes to force your brain to process the information rather than just passively record it is to first simplify it as much as you can. By simplifying the information, you're making sure you truly understand the concept. If you're not able to simplify it, then the chances are that you don't really understand it on a deep level. It's what the late theoretical physicist Richard Feynman taught. You should be able to break down and explain complex topics in very simple sentences using basic terminology. If you're unable to do this, then there may be gaps in your knowledge. Once you've simplified the concepts, you then need to summarize it. And this does a couple of things. It makes it easier to remember for the exam. Obviously, the less there is to remember, the easier it will be to remember. So by summarizing a long, complicated concept into short one or two paragraphs, of course, it will be easier to remember for the exam, but also by putting the concepts into your own words, you're processing that information. You're making sure that you truly understand it and you're processing the information and you're storing it in your long-term memory. The second strategy I use to actively stimulate the brain when studying is actually a memorization technique that I picked up from Jim Quick, who is a reading and memory improvement expert. And it's such a simple idea, but it's incredible how powerful it is and how much time it saves. A massive part of memorizing what you read is about asking more questions. So by simply asking yourself questions when reading, it can exponentially increase the amount of information you retain from that book. I never just picked up a textbook and just started reading it without regularly asking questions throughout. Because if you're just passively reading rather than actively reading, 
you're basically wasting your time. You're not, you're just not studying smart. You need to engage your mindset where you're more receptive to the information you're reading. And when I was reading a thick, heavy textbook, I would make notes on a separate piece of paper and I'd put a line down in the middle of the page. And on the left side, I would take notes. These would just be the most important snippets of the text that I thought might be useful for the exam. On the right side, I'd have my own thoughts and questions on what I just read. And Jim Quick talks about this method of retaining information from books quite often. He says that there are three main questions you should be writing down on the right side of the page. The first question is, how can I use this? And so it forces you to link pieces of information from the book to the bigger picture. Now, does the information that you just read link in with knowledge that you already know? And what happens at this stage is that your brain is linking these new pieces of information to things that you already know and are strengthening your neural network, therefore making it easier to remember in the future. The second question is, why must I use this? Because if it's not a must, then there's nothing compelling you to do it. So it could be because the notes that you just wrote down could be the answer to a certain question in the exam. If your lecturer has asked you to read a certain chapter in a textbook, there's usually a good reason why they've recommended it. And that reason could be because the content in that chapter is likely to come up in the exam. And the third question is, when will I use this? What this question does is it adds urgency. When is your exam coming? Is it in two weeks, in three weeks, or in two months maybe? Often when you're reading a textbook, we're just skimming through it passively because we're not engaged in the reading. There's no urgency there. The reason why so many students are cramming 24 hours before for the exam is because there's a sense of urgency, right? You know you need to get material memorized before the exam that's the next day, so you're far more engaged. By asking the question, when will I use this? You're adding artificial urgency to your studying because you do have a deadline, usually your exam date, but it's all too easy to forget this when you have weeks or even months to study before the exam. The Feynman technique is another great way of engaging the brain when studying. So the Feynman technique is when you explain a complex concept to either a friend or a sibling or a parent, basically someone with zero or very little knowledge of the concept that you're explaining. You don't actually need to teach someone though, you can pretend to teach someone instead. So that's just as effective and it's how I use the Feynman technique at university. There are four steps to the Feynman learning technique based on the method Richard Feynman originally used. These four steps are the exact steps that I took as well. Pretend to teach a concept that you want to learn about to a student that is about 12 years old. Identify gaps in your explanation. If you struggle to explain something in simple terminology or you find yourself stumbling on your words because you don't understand the concept completely, then go back to the source material to better understand it. Reread the source material and simplify it more. And repeat again. This step is optional, but you'll realize that every time you go back to relearn and simplify the concepts, you'll be able to explain it better and better. And it's also also why studying with friends can be a really effective way of studying. I found myself accidentally using the Feynman technique quite a lot at university. So friends would come up to me and ask me questions about the course or ask me to explain something from the lecture that they didn't understand. And by explaining it to them, I was almost solidifying it in my mind and storing that information into my long-term memory. So studying with friends comes with one caveat though. When studying in a group, it's really easy to get distracted and start talking about unrelated things. So you do need a group of friends that are just as motivated as you that will keep the study session focused and on topic. But by explaining the topics to your friends, you'll be inadvertently using the Feynman technique. If you're unable to explain the concept to your friends in a simplified way, then it's likely that you don't know the topic well enough. A final way of using advanced information processes to activate your brain when studying is by drawing diagrams such as mind maps. Now, I didn't use this technique much much, as I'm not much of a visual learner, but I had friends at university that swore by it. So a mind map is a visual diagram of a collection of ideas of information. It's something referred to as a spider diagram. If you imagine the title is the center of a page as the spider's body and all the ideas sprouting from the body as if they're the spider's legs. The information that branches off from the center are all related to or associated with the titles in the center. And this is often used as a way of brainstorming. A study by Farhan Hussein and Hennessy in 2002 found that 
mind mapping improved the long-term memory of factual information in medical students by 10%. They reported that mind maps provide an effective study technique when applied to written material and that they are likely to encourage a deeper level of processing for better memory retention. Moreover, research was done on the efficacy of mind mapping by Ralston and Cook in 2007. The study took place over a period of six weeks in two English primary schools and in each case about 12 10 to 11 year old students were included. All the activities that were chosen to be enhanced with the use of mind maps were ones that encouraged discussion and negotiation. And the study concluded that an exercise involving mind mapping software provided a useful focus for students to organize their thoughts and to present information clearly and attractively. So the next time you're studying, really think about it, really think about whether or not you're processing the information, whether or not you're activating your brain when you're studying, or if you're just studying passively. Because if you're studying passively for 12 hours a day, every day, then honestly, you're wasting your time. You're studying hard and that's awesome but just studying hard often isn't it enough to get the very highest grades and it's why it's so important to make your studying fun it's why it's so important that you get to this position where you want to study where you realize how much your studying is going to be positively benefit your life because if you're not in that place if you're not really interested in what you're studying and you're disengaged and you don't really care about it then that's a very dangerous place to be in. Ironically, by putting effort into your studying and really putting in the work, you can make your life so much easier. You can free up so much time. You can study so much smarter by studying actively rather than passively. And if you have any questions about this lesson, anything at all, just let me know below and I'll do my best to answer all of you.